It's Sunday, May 1st, 2011, and you're watching This Week in Linux News. As you've probably noticed, things look a little bit different here. If you'd like to learn a little bit more about what has changed, go ahead and check out my second channel, youtube.com slash twilltalks. I think I've put three different videos talking about it up now, so you just have to go take a look at those. But let's go ahead and get started with the news. We had quite a bit of news related to distro releases this week. Chakra GNU Linux put out their 2011.04 release. Of course, this is a rolling release distro, so it was kind of expected to see a release in April. Slackware Linux, one of the oldest surviving Linux distributions, put out their 13.37 release. Following closely in the footsteps of Mandriva, Magia 1's Beta 2 is now available as well. TinyCore Linux, the self-professed world's smallest Linux distro, put out their 3.6 release this week. And I think there was something else. What was it? Oh yeah, um, Ubuntu put out their 11.04 release. And of course along with that come a bevy of other Ubuntu-based distributions like Kubuntu, Xubuntu, Lubuntu, Mythbuntu, Edgeubuntu, Ubuntu Studio, and probably a couple of hundred other ones. I think I've put out six different videos on the different development phases of the main Ubuntu project in the last few months. If you'd like to see any of those, I'll put together a playlist and have a link to that down in the source code below. But that's enough distro release news for now. Let's go ahead and move on to some Ubuntu news. This week, according to the Canonical blog, Ubuntu released a completely new look and feel for their website. Mainly the biggest differences are they're going to show off more features of the Ubuntu distro and make it more easy for new users to transition into using Unity by showing off some of what it can do and how you can do things with it on the main page of the site. So if you haven't taken a look at the new Ubuntu site yet, I do suggest you go over to Ubuntu.com and just see what's changed. But speaking of Ubuntu, as you know 11.04 just released, and the updates for 11.10 have already started trickling in, and apparently one of the big changes that's going to come with 11.10 is they're going to add in all of the GNOME 3 packages. So if all works out according to plan, you should be able to, on boot time, select between GNOME Shell or Unity without having to completely break your system to use one or the other. According to Pharonix.com, there are a bunch of other changes in the works they're going to be talking about at UDSO, the Ubuntu Developer Summit for Oneric Ocelot, which should be in May if I'm not mistaken. Aside from switching around which packages are included by default and changing maybe the default desktop manager from GDM to LightDM, changing from Evolution to Thunderbird, a whole bunch of things are being thrown around at the moment. As I hear more, I will definitely let you all know. That's enough Ubuntu specific news, let's go ahead and move on to general Linux news. This week, in a bit of an update that I'm extraordinarily excited about, Kden Live released their 0.8 version. It was supposed to be out in March of 2011, it came out by the end of April, so I'm not terribly disappointed. This new version comes with a load of new features such as stop motion effects and light graffiti painting so you can take a light source and paint on the screen with it, sort of. But one of the most entertaining ones for me is rotoscoping. It's something I don't know a whole lot about yet, but basically it's a feature that's only been reserved for most of the professional type video editors up until this point, Cinelera being the only one on Linux I think that's had it so far. So of course, once I do a little bit of experimentation with it, I will try to make a tutorial and show off some of the new features, show off how you use them, things like that. If you do have any suggestions on that or places where I can go to read up on it, definitely let me know in the comment section below. In another exciting software-related story, a couple of months ago we talked about the project to help bring Adobe's Creative Suite to Linux. Basically at that point they were telling you to go to their website and fill out a form requesting specifically, I want this app ported over to Linux. Basically at this point they've gotten so many thumbs up about it, they've said just stop submitting the reports, go to the Git Satisfaction page and keep thumbing it up so that they'll know that people are definitely interested. It's definitely on their radar now and we're going to keep our fingers crossed to see if we can get it out soon. Now of course there are no guarantees, there are no firm deadlines that it will be coming on certain date, but now that the Adobe engineering team is aware that the Linux community is ready, willing, and able to get Adobe software, hopefully they will take the initiative and start making us some decent software for Linux. Now that's not to say we don't have decent software already, but to take a piece of software that's already designed and created for professionals by professionals would be very awesome to see. Alright, let's go ahead and move on to some Android news, and there wasn't a whole lot of it this week in my opinion. If you own a Nook Color and you're not already running Nookie, Froyo, or Honeycomb, or something else on it, an official update to the Nook Color has been released by Barnes & Noble this week, bringing it up to Android Froyo version 2.2, enabling webmail through an all-in-one inbox, and enabling Adobe Flash to work. 
I don't own a Nook Color myself, so I can't really tell you how it works, if it works, but I will be talking to my coworker who owns one to see if he's updated his yet. In other Android-related news, Google put out a tweet on their Google Nexus Twitter account saying basically that the Android 2.3.4 update will be rolling out in the next few weeks to all of the Nexus S and Nexus One devices. It's mainly bug fixes for the Nexus One, but it's adding video chat capabilities through Google Talk for the Nexus S. And of course, all of that should be making it to the AOSP, the Android open source project in the very near future. So hopefully those people in the modding community will be rolling it out as well. I do remember reading something that CyanogenMod is already working on that. So I'm keeping my fingers crossed for my tablet. And the last story I'd like to talk about today, Amazon has responded to Apple's lawsuit against them claiming that they own the term App Store and that Amazon is infringing on them. Amazon's response is that the term App Store is too generic and that one company can't claim it. From the article, they talk about how the word app was the word of the year, I believe, of 2011. So to say that the App Store is something that one company can trademark, it seems a little bit off. I kind of agree in that aspect. But that does bring up an interesting point, and I believe it was Barnes & Noble that actually made this point. Companies like Microsoft and Apple and all of those others that are suing Android-based developers and Android-based manufacturers, are they doing this for a reason? Are they trying to put a stigma on Android and Android-based devices that if you use them, you're going to be going against Apple and against Microsoft? And are they really just trying to frighten the customer away? Honestly, I think it's just business. I think they're just trying to spread that fear, uncertainty, and doubt that a lot of people love to do. But I'd love to know your opinion in the comment section below. I do read all of the comments, of course. But that's all I've got for you today. If you have any comments, questions, or suggestions, feel free to leave them in the comment section below or on my forum, forums.thisweekinlinux.com. That's all for today, though. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time.